Hey everyone, this is Man Kamenacha, and today super excited to be doing a tutorial on Super VR Odyssey. Now, as you can probably tell, this demo was heavily inspired by Super Mario Odyssey, which launched just the day before this video is released. And at a high level, what I'm going to be doing is showing you this GitHub project that you can download for yourself, and then just walking through how you can set up Steam VR's interaction system, how you can get that hat tossing to be kind of that cartoony style that Mario has. And then three, just the teleportation and the level design, even the small demo. So with that explained, let's just dive right into this. All right, so we're here in Unity and you can see that there are a ton of folders and a ton of assets and mainly because there was a lot of different components to actually add the sound effects, add the art, and all those things take up a different file. So that's kind of why there's so much here. Um, but you can see SteamVR is in here. We've got a, a little hat model and we have our hat toss scene. So this is the main thing that you're gonna be using. Let's go ahead and open that up. And so starting off here, we have our little red hat and uh, these two balls here are what represent the player. Um, you can actually go ahead and click on them. That's the actual capsule and then you can see the, the player hand colliders. Uh, this will automatically just kind of spawn those controllers and you can also spawn whatever mesh you want using SteamVR interaction system. Here we have our cannon. And so this cannon is um, right here. We have a cannon script that's basically shooting and constantly shooting these bullets that are the bullet bills that are coming slowly always towards you. So that basically is what's going to act as our trigger to teleport onto. Last but not least, we have our little flag here. This is basically just made of three components, a brick and the pole. Um, and the last but not least is this little pirate flag that um, I was able to put together. Surprisingly, they're all done using just standard primitives. That's a cube, cylinder, and a cube that I shrunk down a lot. Last but not least is this castle that I was finding off the asset store. And you can tell that it's pretty hacky, especially because of this back. There's no back to the castle. Uh, there's just the the wood and then there's this is actually a texture atlas So that's what you're seeing on the top here and also the back setup that you kind of see here is Not really. It's just a plane. So really nothing This is probably the least fleshed out but for the purposes of that video and the purpose of this demo uh, It gives that effect of a castle, which is really neat. Obviously, there's a um, this actual asset pack comes with a full-fledged castle. If you want, you can go ahead and use that. You can actually even add a little bit of fire, uh, make it kind of feel really more realistic if you want. But that's really all that's set up here. Um, so what we can do is, let's just kind of break this down. There are really three scripts that are at play. You can find them within the script scene. Here they are. So first is the hat toss. Uh, so the hat toss is what's really, really giving us that feel of uh, Super Mario Odyssey where you're able to, ha to toss your hat and then teleport around and Basically, so you can see that here. Uh, we have a, a variable for how much time we want to float We have a little Wii sound effect that we can play and uh, we also want to keep track of our own rigid body So to start assigns it we have our public method for tossing it and we have a little coroutine here uh, that allows us to actually animate ourselves uh, as we move our hat forward and backwards. And the last part here is if we actually hit something to teleport the player to that point. So starting up here, uh, what you can see, this is basically just the initialization. So we play our sound clip, we uh, reset our velocity, we set up our rotation to be always facing uh, horizontally. Uh, we add an angular velocity based on the speed that we throw with. And then we just start up our coroutine. Uh, coroutine here, uh, moving on to it, it just tells us what that velocity is. And based on that, it's uh, basically it just sets a weight. And once you wait that max amount of time, 
then it slows it down to zero, so that's that little uh, animation lerp to get it to have a velocity of zero, but still floating and spinning constantly. And then it comes back. So this is the slowdown. This is the, the speed up in the reverse direction. You can see that with the negative sign there. And uh, then we have it, uh, basically once it comes back to you or close to you, we just kind of wait this amount of time. Uh, we just stop it so that it's right for it, ready for you, either whether or not you've um, thrown it or whether it's just coming back. So that's what that coroutine is doing. And then if you happen to hit an enemy, the tag here is kind of arbitrary. You can name this whatever you want within the Unity editor. Um, but we're just saying if you hit an enemy, in this case the bullet bills, then stop the coroutine, stop moving the hat, and uh, move the player. Um, luckily for us, when we use the Steam VR interaction system, we get a nice reference to that without having to set up anything. So we just move it to wherever the hat is, um, relative to the ground, of course. We, we make sure to set the, the same player position. And uh, we make sure to just destroy the, the actual enemy. Obviously, in real Super Mario Odyssey, you would actually take over that enemy. Um, but that's not built here. But effectively, if you wanted to do something like this, you might want to set like a flag here that basically says, now give me X ability, or maybe the ability to move or the ability to be large. I don't know. It kind of depends on whatever you want to do. Um, but this is kind of just where you would add that in and add whatever special effects you want to do. So that's really all there is to it. The, the key really to getting the hat is this coroutine that animates it and is constantly keeping it spinning. But other than that, there's there's nothing fancy going on, and that's the really cool part about it. It's the Mario Odyssey hat toss is actually a really simple thing that we can then uh, code up within 60 or so lines of code. So that's really awesome. All right, so that's this script. Now the other things here are obviously the cannon and the hat. Both of those aren't doing anything nearly as fancy as the actual um, uh, hat toss itself. Canon, literally all it's doing is just constantly rotating. Uh, we're actually just overriding start to make it a coroutine. Uh, and then every so often we'll just spawn a bullet and then an update we just rotate. Nothing terribly fancy here, but it does have a nice effect of like constantly spawning all of these bullets all over the place and giving you this little challenge of like, where do I want to actually teleport to? So that's the really cool part about that. And the last part here, again, nothing terribly fancy is having an animator, having a nice little audio clip that plays whenever we hit the flag with our actual, either our, you can do this so that it's either the controller or whether when the hat actually hits it. So in the video that you saw as part of the teaser, that is what that actually does. It's just like waits for the hat to hit it and then once it does, it acts as a trigger and then just causes the flag to run down. And this is just a small little animation that I made um, you can make this with any Unity, there's nothing really fancy going on there. So that's pretty much how this whole thing's set up. Like I said, nothing fancy, but you can use these basic mechanics to now, let's say you want to take over an object, like, so say when you take over a billet bull, just like in Super Mario Odyssey, you can now, like, use it and control it to, like, move all over the place. Uh, same thing with the cannon, um, you can make it do whatever you want. Maybe you want it to rotate in a bunch of different directions and allow the player to like move around based on that. Um, the flag, I mean, you can't ever really get rid of the flag. The flag's kind of iconic to Mario, uh, even if this flag doesn't look like it. And last but not least, if you really want to flush this out, make this like a proper castle. Maybe this is where you enter that boss stage and maybe Bowser or some, some other boss is waiting for you here. And uh, yeah, that pretty much does it. There's, a, again, not nothing like terribly complicated about it. It's just getting all these little pieces together, and then once you put them together, it makes a really, really awesome piece. If you all enjoyed this video, this is actually a really small tutorial because there are just a lot of different components in play. But to be honest, this is probably one of the most fun VR Vive demos that I've gotten to build, just because it has that nostalgia factor but also just feels really, really good. So if you want to play around with this for yourself, then definitely go check out the GitHub repo and you can make a build. And if you want a build to be released, then just leave a comment below. And once we get enough, then I'll throw up a build somewhere. So again, hope you all enjoyed. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.